My mother has always told me that men act like doves, but love like shadows in the night. Men have hollow hearts and concrete rib cages, transparent emotions, very in unknown intentions and hands, too rough to hold anything but empty promises. She doesn't say it. But I can tell by the way her worry glares drop sharp nose of awkward silence in the space between us that she is scared. I will grow up in a world where shown apathy and violence as masculinity is the genesis of adulthood. Scared that I will grow up like a caged bird that learns how to peck and fly before it can sing so she loves me from a distance. The same way that a moon loves a sun knowing that the only way a woman and a shadow can love equally is without touching. Grandma is a very nice and sweet lady. Just when we grew up, when I was little, you know. We never barely talking about like we barely have like communication, like sharing how to express our feeling. We never have a chance to do that. But I try to bring us relations as close as we can. I encourage you guys to talk to me and ask you a question. That's why I ask you, how are you guys doing, baby girl? How's your school? My relationship with my parents. I mean, it's difficult. It's pretty awkward. <laughs> Not gonna lie. My mom is not someone who I can really go to for support. They don't really understand what I'm going through because I'm the first one. It's America. It's totally different than what they've been through. It's difficult. You have to, you have to like do an Asian pose. One, two, three. Um, I can't even speak me in that fluent anymore because I speak English so much. I have to mix my language with English, so sometimes it's even harder because you don't even know how to say a certain word. Um, a lot of stuff that I want to tell them, I can't say in Mian. Like, even when I'm looking for something for them, I can't say it in Mian. So I have to, like, I stutter through the whole sentence and then I say what I'm looking for in English. <laughs> Both of them are immigrants and it's hard to actually talk to them about like how my life is at school or even like problems with like relationships. So it's like really hard. It's not the type of communication we have. It's more the lack of or that we don't talk to each other much. Because like when I go home, I mean, I just, no one's home because my, both of my parents are working. So I just end up doing my own thing. And when they go home, they have their own things to do. That's cook dinner, clean up and then we eat dinner and it's just quiet most of the time and that's basically it. I mean, you don't really t I don't really talk to them about much. Yeah. Mm. The old, the traditional ways, they say girls doesn't need Education, because you're a new boy, you're gonna marry, you're gonna take care of the family, you're gonna have kids, you're gonna cook it at home. So that's why we didn't have a chance to go to uh, school. They don't care about the education. Well, when I grew up in my country, I did, usually girls don't have a chance to go to school, but I lucky I have a chance to go to school like for two or three years. But a lot, a lot, like 80 or maybe 90 percent of the girls in my country, when they grow up, they don't have a chance, not even have a chance to go to school, not even have a chance to hold pen. So if you don't have education, so you, you, you will be, have a difficult life, for sure. Even though you go through a lot, you work out everything for your life, but still a challenge. So basically, it's education number one, it's the first, always from the first place. When I was younger, I told her, she was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I was like, oh, I want to be an artist. And I didn't really realize like what being an artist even meant. You know, I just like drawing and like painting. This was my kind of, you know, like five-year-old mind who doesn't really think about money and wasn't hindered by any of that. And I told her I wanted to be an artist. And she was like, no, you can't be an artist. Artists don't make any money. You need to be a doctor. Um, and so 
I mean, I think ever since we were younger, she's always just encouraged us to be really academic and be really diligent in our schoolwork because she believes that that's what's going to be the best for us. She wants us to be successful and to go off to college and get a good job and then take care of her when she's older. When I was younger, my parents really expected me to be like a doctor or a lawyer, but now they're more lenient towards whatever I want to do. Um, they're really supportive of what I want to be, regardless of what it is. They just want me to be successful and live like a successful life. And the ironic thing is that I do want to be a doctor, <laughs> despite like all the artistic things I want to do. I want to be a doctor. A spoken word is one of the most unique art forms ever to me because you could combine so many things with it. There's dance, there's acting, there's um, singing. There's just so many things you could do with spoken word, which is why I am so interested in it. But I wrote a poem about my mother and how like our relationship is kind of distant and awkward. And it's just me apologizing to her, saying that, you know, I'm sorry that I don't talk to you a lot. You know, we should talk more and stuff like that. Yeah, writing those poems really helped me realize what was wrong with my relationship with my parents. Um, it's not that often where I have time to just think over everything that's wrong or like what I'm not doing right. And um, it's really liberating just to know that I could figure out what is wrong with the relationship first. Like the first step towards fixing anything is figuring out what's wrong. I guess one way that my parents can support me is like, um, I guess just be more open. Like instead of g judging me first, they should just like say like, how's your day? Or I guess just, yeah, be more supportive and encouraging, not put down me so much. The ideal relationship between a mom and her daughter would be like one of trust, one of communication where um, I wouldn't have to worry about who I am to make her proud. I would be able to tell her what I wanted to and she would still support me in that. I remember when you used to hug me and kiss me and tell me that you love me. Now we just wave at each other and smile, then turn the other way. Our love for each other is like two blackbirds dancing on opposite sides of an angry skyline. Her. Too afraid to cross and me. Just waiting, mama. There's nothing for you to be afraid of. Your hugs shouldn't come once a year like an orbit around the sun. Our kisses shouldn't hold the same possibility of happening like two asteroids crashing. Just know I won't ever leave you. You raised me, but you are my son and I'm your shadow. A silhouette of your legacy. I can't leave you as long as you are standing. I revolve around you. You don't need to be afraid to love me. You won't lose me. And I will show you that I can love you through this distance. Maybe, maybe the first steps towards loving you is to lay my hands on you. I'll place your palms into mine so we can remember the synchronicity of our heartbeats and remind ourselves that we create each other's universe.